It's time for Windows Weekly, episode 188 with Paul Thoreau. We'll take a look at Windows phone sales and update on the latest Windows slates. And Dimitri Lialin joins us to talk about the Twit application on Windows Phone 7. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat, episode 188 for December 23rd, 2010. There'll be no dancing. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Ford and the new 2011 Ford Fiesta. With an EPA-estimated 40 highway miles per gallon, no other compact car is more fuel efficient. Drive one this week at a dealer near you and see how Ford stacks up to the Lamborghini when it comes to agility. Watch the Fiesta versus Lamborghini video on YouTube. And by Carbonite.com. Backing up the files on your PC or Mac is safe and easy with Carbonite. For a free trial plus two free months with purchase, go to Carbonite.com. Offer code Windows. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers your Microsoft needs deeply and thoroughly with the man... The myth, the legend, drinking now from a large glass of vodka to celebrate Festivus, Mr. Paul Thorat. Meeting the needs. Of the Microsoft yes. Minion. Hey, thanks to uh, Tom Merritt for uh, filling in for me and apparently doing so well that Paul's actually asked him back. Like, I'm tired of you. Like now. <laughs> <laughs> like So damn tired. Like, get, get, where is Merritt? Get Merritt in here. Is what I, he's saying. I had, I had a good time with Tom. Yeah, I think uh, Tom is wonderful. Wonderful guy. I don't know if he uses uh, Windows, but he's a wonderful fellow. Does he, he does use, use Windows. Does he? All right. And Tom probably starts on time and things like that. He's very, um, he's very professional. <laughs> I don't mean I'm that putting as a, the teeth back. I don't here. mean that as a compare and contrast kind of thing. I just <laughs> yes, yes, you do. It's okay. It's more of a compliment to him. I how is uh, how's your holiday going? I know this is Festivus. Mm hmm. Uh, and uh, the feats of strength uh, and the aluminum pole are here in the yeah, other yeah, room. Yeah. But the, but you are in charge of the airing of grievances. Uh, that's it's gonna yeah, be year that round. That's actually thing. how I think of my job. You know, um, it's funny you say that because I, someone from Microsoft just called me on something uh, related to an article I wrote. You know, and I I gave him the reply. I I've, I I hold waiting for someone to call when I you know knowing that it will come eventually. I've been waiting on this reply, which is, my job is a complainer, a critic. I don't have answers. I just have problems. <laughs> you know, your your job is to fix the problems. My job, which is so much easier, is just to point out the problems. Mm, that's why we chose this line of work. Right, because we are complainers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would be doing this, you know, on the couch by myself to anyone who would listen, just complaining. The soup is too cold. <laughs> Why have you not shoveled the walk? You're going to be a fun old man. <laughs> <laughs> I already am. You know? If you're this bitter as a young yeah. man, I can only imagine what life will be like once the winter of our years approaches. Of your years. my year, I'll be long gone, but... I, well, I don't think I'm going to be long behind you, but <laughs> it's... Uh... <laughs> you're supposed to say, I'll dance on your grave, Laporte. No, there'll be no dancing. Um, <laughs> By the way, let me write that down. I think that's the show title. <clears throat> Already, I'll, just a few minutes in, and we've got a show title. I'll dance on your grave. Uh, no, there'll be no dancing. Oh, there'll be no dancing. Yeah. You, that probably is kind of your motto in general. <laughs> that's, I, that's absolutely true. You may have a sign on your, uh, on your door that says that. There'll be no dancing. There'll be no dancing. You must be happy, though. Mm -hmm. With the uh, the pace of sales for Windows Phone Seven, it's actually doing pretty well. And now I have to say, I just saw AT and T has a deal where you buy one get one free. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, there's a phone like that. There's a deal like that on almost every phone on earth. And it doesn't mean anything because AT and T is still going to get your thousands of dollars in the yes. active. They might as well I, give them away. This, you know, I, I I feel that people have a misguided way of looking at things. Sometimes, you know, when people look at a phone and they say, wow, they just dropped the price on this thing from $199 to $99. That's a good deal. 
No, that's not a good deal. You're still spending two thousand, right. twenty two hundred dollars, whatever it is, right. over the lifetime of this phone. They effectively cut it by like you know three percent, ten percent or so yeah. less. Yeah, I mean, so it, it's really, I, it's amazing to me that people are concerned about things like that. You but know, they the, are. The real... That's the psychology of it. That's why you start at one ninety nine, so you can do that, right? Right, right, right. So yeah, you know, how I, many? How it, many did they sell? Do we so know? They, they've said that they've sold 1.5 million copies. Now wait a minute. Uh, in now six weeks. I've seen people say no. That's in the channel, or they've mm -hmm. that's how many they've shipped. Is that how many have gone out the door? No, that's how many copies Microsoft has sold. And and but then that's the sticking point here. And that's the thing that again, you know, it amazes me that people aren't, you know, have no understanding of what that means and why you know why we're not really comparing apples to oranges or whatever. You know, when Apple sells a product, whatever it is, an iPhone, an iPod, a Mac, they sell it directly to a consumer. There, there are no third parties between them and the consumer other than, you know, a, a, a reseller, you know, like a, a Best Buy sometimes or, or whatever. But largely, they're selling directly to somebody. That's how they sell things. Microsoft sells almost nothing directly to consumers. They sell most of their products through, well, most of their consumer products, I guess, through uh, third parties. You know, PCs and phones are all done through third parties. The, the sales that Microsoft makes are, to, in this case with phones, are to the hardware manufacturers, the companies that make the phones. Those companies then put that on a hardware device and they sell that to AT&T, oh. Verizon, whatever it is. So Microsoft's saying we sold 1.5 million actually, licenses so, to the manufacturers. Oddly enough, that's, that's actually not what they said. The, the, what they said was that hardware makers have sold 1.5 million phones oh. running Windows Phone into the channel, you know, into it, to wireless carriers and so forth. Now, a lot of people have looked at that and said, wow, well, that means there must be a lot of stock sitting on shelves. Really, only, you know, so, several hundred thousand have gone out to, cons you know, to right. consumers or customers of some kind, whatever. Um, yeah, okay, maybe. Except that when you look at Microsoft, a company that makes a product and they sell it, right? Now, clearly, they've sold more than 1.5 million Windows Phone licenses because, you know, these hardware manufacturers have licenses they haven't used yet. I mean, right. that's, you know, uh, logically speaking. Yeah, they, they probably so, license in, you know, in bulk. Yeah. Not one to Microsoft, one. but to Microsoft, to their bottom line, to the revenue picture for this quarter, whatever, however you want to look at it, that sale is as much of a sale to that company as a sale is to Apple. It's the same kind of sale. It's a, it's a sale that impacts their bottom line. They get paid every time they make a sale. So, yes, uh, some of those things are probably sitting in an AT&T store somewhere in, you know, Indiana or something or whatever. But to Microsoft, Microsoft has sold 1.5, uh, probably more than 1.5 million units. Just like Apple has sold X number of million units when they say they've sold X number of million units. So, you know, Apple sells things differently than Microsoft. It's just a, a nature of the business uh, model that they have. I mean, it's just the way it is. You know, when Microsoft sells Windows, most of those copies of Windows are going out with PCs. But Microsoft doesn't sell them to consumers. They sell them to PC makers who then resell it to consumers. So, uh, you know, uh, people have tried to make a big deal out of that. But you know, like I said, to Microsoft, that is a sale. It's a sale. Yeah, well, so there's two, there's two things that people are impugning. One mm -hmm. is that Microsoft uses that number... Uh, because it looks better than actually saying how many people are using the thing. And in fact, you know, if you did that with Kin, you could say, "Oh, yeah, we sold a million Kin." Well, I, I but only that. four were used, so, and well, uh, and nine hundred ninety nine thousand <laughs> and nine hundred ninety six right. so, got returned. So that wouldn't count. But, but I don't. I don't, don't want to impugn way, Microsoft. True, uh, but. I don't want to yeah. impugn Microsoft that way because I don't think that's the case. I think that's the but that's it's not, the, ac it's not accurate. That's the industry it's, number anyway. That's what they give. That, that's what they know is how this, many. No, th in other words, this is not Microsoft's attempt at chicanery. This is the way they. This is w when Microsoft registers a sale. That's how it's registered. That, I understand. I mean, uh, literally, legally, and financially, that's when that sale gets registered against their bottom line. It's a, it is a sale. It's not a, right. an attempt at you know making you think. But, something well, else it could happened. get returned though, right? I mean, it's not necessarily. Of course, but an Apple product could get returned too. No, no, I'm not comparing I mean, I, it to Apple. Forget <laughs> Apple. I don't care I'm about just, Apple. I'm, but I'm just saying, you know, as another obvious competitor. Everybody whatever, does you know? this. This is the way yeah. that this stuff is measured. Well, no, actually, I, I can't say that everyone does this. You know, one of the things that is, uh, I would say that this is the way Microsoft has always done it. Right. You know, and Microsoft's been around for a long time. You know, when Google talks about Android sales, 
You'll notice that what they talk about is activations. Well, but that's because they don't sell Android. Well, that, but that's the but, only thing they know because when, okay. when, but the way Android works, I could make an Android device. I don't have to tell Google. The only way a Google knows is the activation comes in. And they go, oh, okay, somebody's using it somewhere. That's all they know. Well, Google, right. So Google's model is very close to Microsoft's in a sense. But what Google is talking about is activations. Yeah, you know? but I don't think you can compare it because it isn't the same model. They don't make any money off the. Android okay. activations. That's not. There's no revenue. Fair, for fair, fair enough. I'm, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, free companies sell platforms that are mobile platforms that are sold with phones, and they're all done completely different ways. <laughs> you know, um, Apple deals directly with consumers uh, for the most part. Google talks about how their platform makes money. It's unclear how it does, but whatever. Well, it's they, advertising. It's not because they, they sell Android. Okay. Anybody but can they use talked it about activations. Yeah. I, I think that activations are. A more accurate reflection of how many are in the marketplace than what Microsoft does, but but yeah, again, and in fact, I wonder why. Not that Microsoft's ever done this in the past, but they could say, "Oh, well, this is how many Windows phones have been activated." They yep. could say that. They know that, they right? Could, they could, yeah. Now, right. So I'm going to guess it's less than 1.5 million activations, right? It's probably in the 1 million to 1. Point whatever million range, but it's we, still a lot of fun. I think the bottom line on this is, and this is where I was going with. It. I don't want to impugn yep. Microsoft. It's yeah. clear this phone is 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 a success. It is not the fifteen thousand units that people were saying. It's a success. No, 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 no. It's ludicrous. That stuff was always ludicrous. I, there, there are different ways of looking at the platform and how well it's doing and all that kind of stuff. I mean, one of the things that I found really interesting was some of the the figures around the marketplace. For example, um, I wrote a little bit about this in Short Takes this morning, where um, we know that there's somewhere around forty four hundred apps in the marketplace right now, and and the marketplace has only been open for about. Uh, about two months, l l I think a little bit over two months. You know, at this point, Apple, uh, after they had opened their marketplace, had about 4,000 apps. You know, uh, Google took somewhere, I want to say it was about 15 to 18 months to hit that figure. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, that's Palm uh, the, with the WebOS. And then uh, it took Android about five months to hit 4,000 apps. So that's... It, it, you know, people need to remember that Windows Phone is brand new. And it's not just brand new, like company came out of nowhere and here's a new mobile platform like Google did. It, it is, you know, we had a mobile strategy and we completely walked away from it and we're starting over. And now we have to convince people not only to buy this thing that's new, but to forget about that other thing we had and know we're really serious this time. And all of the, you know, kind of weird insecurities and, and, and psychological stuff that goes around with that. And, you know, the marketplace and the number of developers they have and the number of apps they have, is I think a very positive sign about where Windows Phone is headed. And then I think we're gonna see stuff at CES next month around you know, Verizon and Sprint will be picking uh, up the phone in the United States, there'll be new devices and so forth. And of course, you know, the updates they've been promising forever, uh, which should improve the, you know, the underlying software as well. So uh, Windows Phone is not a raging success story by any stretch of the imagination, but it's also not a, a, the disaster. I think that some people are trying to paint it as for whatever reason. And I think it's, you know, it's off to a solid start. I mean, I, Microsoft would describe this, has described this as what they expected, you know, and I, I can't claim that I ever had any expectations because it's impossible for someone on the outside to really know. I mean, how, you know, how could this go? I mean, how, you know, how could it go? But I can say sort of anecdotally that people who see this thing love it and are really impressed by it. And one of the things that actually struck me recently was, I had shown, you know, I show my phone off to different people that I know, or, uh, you know, I'll show it to them or they'll ask about it or whatever. And uh, three, of, three of my friends actually have bought these things since I showed it to them a month or two ago, bought the exact same phone, and I didn't even realize it. You know, and I saw one of these guys the other night, and he's like, oh, yeah, my wife and I both bought the, that Samsung Focus that you have. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, I mean, because there was no indication that, you know, they saw that and said, oh, my God, I have to go get this. But it's really interesting. Um that it is one of those types of devices. I think people see it and it really resonates with them. That's it's a it's an interesting new way of doing things and and just a nice phone in its own right. We're going to actually talk a little bit to uh, somebody who did a Windows Phone Seven app for us. Sure, we're very pleased to uh, yes, to talk to yes. Dimitri and a little bit about the Twit app. Mm -hmm. So well, one and a half million. I mean, if you're I, one of the reasons that number is important, besides uh, you know kind of slapping the naysayers, is for developers. Because they're looking right. very carefully and saying, well, should I write an app? I mean, I've got a develop an iPhone, an iPad developer here, and an Android developer here mm -hmm. uh, in the studio with me. Darren wrote a program called uh, Idealizer, which I really like. Mm -hmm. 
notice Android and, and iOS. Well, those are the two big platforms. But I think right. would you, let me let me just ask him. He can nod because he can't hear him. But but would you consider Windows Phone at some point if there were enough units sold? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, he says that's what I'm looking at. How many units right. are sold is really is really how much money I can make, and also yeah, how hard to develop it and all that stuff. I, I think one of the interesting side effects of Windows Phone coming along when it did was that you know when the iPhone came out, it was a little bit of an unknown. I think. Uh, Apple benefited in a way from having that one year time frame where they didn't have apps because the phone clearly was taking off. So by the time they offered this app store and yeah. the ability to create apps, people you know, said, okay, yeah. we, need to, we need to figure there this out. pent-up demand. And, yeah, and I think that development environment and the programming language and the frameworks and all that were, were unfamiliar enough to uh, establish developers that it took a while for a lot of people to get up and running on that system. But, you know, whatever. Uh, now, obviously, people understand it very well. You know, by the time Android came out um, and was clearly going to be a big deal, by that point, it becomes a no-brainer. Like, we need to support this. I mean, um, whatever the development environment is, you know, we have to learn it, and, and it's a big deal. And I think one of the nice things for Windows Phone is that the development envir environment is excellent. The languages uh, are well understood, and it should be an easier time for most developers who, uh, to jump onto this now because now... Mobile development is, is uh, a bit more of an established thing, you know, maybe than it was when the iPhone came out. So, you know, we'll see. But there's a lot of um, there's a lot of really high quality apps in the marketplace already, and I'm 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 happy about that. On the other hand, there are of course a lot of the Android style fart apps, and you know, all of the stupidity that you get on the Android side. Well, not all of the stupidity. Yeah, once but... you write your fart code, it's got to naturally yeah. port it other to other platforms. Exactly. You know, you've, exactly. you've collected the sounds. That's the hard part. Now it's just a process. Of yeah, the the data acquisition is the difficult <laughs> part when it comes to the uh, to the fart app. <laughs> you you said also that the Samsung Focus, which we you know of, there are nine different Windows yeah. Phone sevens, but we all agree that we like the Focus. You know, it's interesting because Samsung really the uh, the Nexus S, which is Samsung's uh, mm -hmm. uh, new Google phone, is very similar. Very similar. Very yeah. similar. It's really like the Galaxy the, S platform. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the big, not that this is a big difference, but the one difference maybe, the one uh, notable physical difference between the two phones is that the Nexus X S has that slight curve to it so that when you hold it to your face... Yeah, but that doesn't... That's a little hokey. Yeah, it's but hokey. I think they yeah, have to have... Make... I think they try to make one little thing, right. you know, kind of <laughs> unique between them. Yeah. <laughs> and then they sell the hell out of it, even though it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, you did. What, what sorry, is this what? <laughs> it's funny because when you, you look at it, you can't, even, you can't even tell. You, you can't, know? you can, you know, there's a, the, yeah. and apparently it's the only, only the glass is curved at all. But it's very, right. you know, when you, uh, when I hold it in my hand next to the Windows Phone 7, I mean, it, it, you know, very similar. If, if I had my eyes closed, it'd be very hard to tell the, mm -hmm. the difference between the two. Right. Um, you know, very, very sure. similar. You know, it's um, a nice phone. Yeah, I think both of them, I think Samsung's making the, the best phones out there right now. Yeah. They're doing a good job. All right, we're going to uh, talk more about, mm -hmm. there's my little pretty Windows Phone 7. i got to show you the uh, Twit app in a little bit. We're going to get Dimitri on here to talk about that. Yep. Before we do, my friends, I would like to mention one of our fine sponsors, a, a, little, a little company you may have heard of called Ford. F-O-R-D, Ford, you've heard of them? Yes, the Blue Oval, baby. We're talking about the great Ford Fiesta. There are uh, so many great cars in the Ford line now. They've got the Edge, the Escape, the Focus, the Fusion. I want you to take a look at the Fiesta because it gets 40 miles per gallon highway, according to the EPA. That's the best in its class. Nobody does better than that. 40 miles per gallon. But you don't give up luxury and convenience with this. No, no, no. That 1.6 liter, liter Duratech TIVCTI4 engine. Just snappy and just really fun to drive. You've got the easy fuel, capless fuel filler. I've got that on my Mustang. I love that. Uh, optional uh, features like the heated leather trimmed seats. I'd go for that. I have that too. It was cold this morning. Push that button. I'm warm. My butt's warm anyway. Uh, power shift, six-speed automatic transmission optional. Of course, voice-activated sync, which I don't need to tell you is it, is is the shiznit, as as the kids would say. The in-car... <laughs> Ford would say would, that. Would, would, they, would they say that? <laughs> no, I don't. Now my son gets in the car and goes, for shizzle, papa, mumpizzle. That is the shiznit, that, that sync. He says that. <clears throat> The uh, 
Termite sorry termite. To, sorry to sidetrack you. <laughs> no, I, no, I sidetracked myself actually. Well, it had nothing to do with you. I just this is why I use the Ford Sync because it keeps your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel, and you don't have moments like that where you just go. Aah! You always are paying attention, and yet you could do things like, and I did this today. I'm listening. This is so cool. So I, uh, you know, I, I have an iPod because it's a USB port. So I have an iPod that's got my uh, audio books on there. Get in the car. It just, they just start up. But then I'm listening to Keith Richards' book, uh, Life, and he's talking about a stone song. He's there in there making Beggar's Banquet. And he said, you know, that bumblebee sound, the bee sound in the back of, uh, I can't remember what the song was, is, is, well, I thought of it, but I didn't know it would be easy to do. And so he starts talking about recording it. And I say, wait a minute, I want to hear that. So I press the button on my steering wheel. This is a true-to-life story. I press the button on my steering wheel, and I say, and it goes, boom. I say, audio, boom, sync, boom, play the Rolling Stones, and then whatever the name of that song was, and it plays it. And then I'm done with that song. I go, boom, and I say, go back to life, and it does. You like it without, and you're, and you're driving, you're focused, you're doing all that. I can make a phone call. I could say, uh, call Paul Therod on cell and tell him I'm going to be running late. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> let's stop. It's not playing music. I can, my phone is listening. And th but uh, uh, sometimes, and you've, you've probably received emails. I, I have a, um, a service called Dial to Do, which Scott Monty at Ford told me about. It works so nicely with the uh, sync. So you press the button, bong. And I say, call assistant, because I named it my assistant, because I pretend I have an assistant. I say, call assistant. And it goes, this is dial to do. What would you? And I say, email Paul Therat. Subject, sorry. Body, I'm running late again. Can I start in half an hour? Send. And it sends you an email. Whoosh. Whoosh. Just like that. It's amazing. You probably got those emails, and you, you, you get garbled text, and then you hear, <laughs> and then you know I'm running late, because you know that's what I always say. You, it, with the right phone, and this includes a Windows Phone 7, your messages are read aloud. And in fact, I see here that on the new ones, it's the sound of your voice. I don't, I don't know how they do that. That's got to be an error. It's a, some lady in mine. She's quite sexy. The 2011 Ford Fiesta, gorgeous interior and exterior, 40 miles per gallon, the optional sync. I want you to take a look at it. You're going to love it. If you've seen the video... If you haven't seen it yet, in the YouTube video, check out. It's uh, I think you go search for Fiesta versus Lamborghini on YouTube. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, stop by a Ford dealer this week. Test drive the new 2011 Ford Fiesta. And don't forget, a few more days, I think till one more week now, till the uh, end of the contest to get the trip to Madrid and the $10,000 for the charity of your choice. Go to twitfordfocus.com. Make that two-minute video. You could be going to Madrid next year to be the first to test drive the 2012 Ford Focus, twitfordfocus.com. All right. A skeptical ball throughout. I was just think thinking two things. A, I get too few emails that start off with the word sorry. <laughs> and B, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Actually, I think pretty much every email to you from me says, starts with. Uh, no, I don't mean from you. I mean, yeah, from me alone. Just in general. Microsoft should send you more like that. Item two, as we continue on with our review of the year gone by with Microsoft, set top boxes. You yeah, actually so, are going to you're going to have a little uh, race between the PS3 and Xbox 360. Yeah, I've reviewed a bunch of set top boxes this fall already. You know, the Apple TV, a couple of WD devices, the Roku device, um, the Boxy Box. Am I missing something? They're probably oh, Google oh, yeah, TV, which I've actually have not I've not reviewed Google don't, don't TV. It's terrible. Terrible. Uh, and then I've got a I've got a PS3 in, which is interesting. I I had gotten one when they first came out, and I eventually gave it away uh, to a friend of mine because I never used it. But I I got a new one uh, so I could look at the digital media functionality there. And then of course you have the the Xbox 360, which thanks to its update this year is suddenly a very viable platform. I love loving, it. Yep. You know. Um, so I'll be reviewing the, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in the near future as digital media set-top box devices. But I'd have to say, um, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that, uh, contrary to my previous belief that there wouldn't be a clear winner, I actually think that that WDTV Live Hub might be the best solution you know, for Windows users uh, because of its integration with Windows uh, media sharing technologies. So it's, it is it's a, a really media extender then? 
Well, it's not a it's not a media center extender, uh, but it does it it does two things. It's interesting. It's a streamer, right? Mm -hmm. So you can stream from a collection of uh, content that you may have on a PC or home server or whatever. It has an iTunes server as well, which oh, is cool. nice. Yeah. If you're if you happen to be of that ilk. Um, but it's also a media hub in the sense that it has a one terabyte hard drive and you can set it up to automatically pull down content from different places. So if you rip a DVD to your PC or uh, acquire a, a video in some other fashion or whatever it is, you know, music, photos, whatever, um, that thing can be set up to automatically grab that and then pull it down, you know, to the server itself. The thing that put it over the top for me was something that came up very recently. I... Every year, I think I was talking about this with Tom previously, who, by the way, was an excellent uh, co-host. All right, all right. Stop rubbing it in. <laughs> Crying out loud. I'm just kidding. Um, no, you're not. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I can, I can, I'm, I'm a man. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it's Christmas time and, and we celebrate Christmas here. So, you know, what, like a lot of people probably who listen to this podcast, at some point in the past, I had ripped all of our holiday CDs to MP3 format or whatever. And, you you know, you kind of throw them up on the server. And then over time, I've purchased other songs, you know, through iTunes or Zune or whatever. And you add them to that collection. And, you know, every holiday season, you kind of, you copy them all down to the hard drive locally. Again, you put them in the iTunes, you know, database. You put, you know, you can blast them out around the house with the Apple TV or whatever. You know, I mean, there's different ways to do this. But it's kind of a manual process. And then at some point in you know, February or March, I get around to just deleting the local copy and, you know, the, the main copy sits up on the server until next year, you know. And that's one way to do it. I mean, but the problem with that kind of thing is that, you know, you don't have any understanding of what, what are the really good songs. And plus, it's a limited collection of songs, right? It's whatever music we happen to own, which is whatever it is, you know, 10, 12 albums or something. So this year, what I wanted to do, we pay for Pandora, uh, so you get the higher quality songs and so forth. And I was thinking, you know, Pandora must have holiday music. Oh. And and given that, you know, well, what are the different ways we could get that music out around the house? Now, mm -hmm. one very inexpensive and silly way to do this would be to run Pandora up on your TV yes. using something, whatever right. it is. Which you, you know, can wherever, do. Roku will do it. And, uh, which, you can, yeah. which you can do. Yep. Uh, and you can do that, you know, and that's fine. Um you can you can run if you have a, an iPod Touch or an iPhone. You can run the Pandora app on that device, plug that into powered speakers. You could do that, you know. But one of the problems I have with most of the devices that have a Pandora app on them is that they're not multitasking. So if you're going to run Pandora, you run Pandora and then you get the Pandora UI and that's it. And that's the only thing that can happen. And one of the really nice things about that WDTV Live Hub is that it actually multitasks. So you can run Pandora and then, you, you know, music starts up and then you get out of Pandora and you can go and trigger a, a photo slideshow or do something else while that Pandora music is playing in the background. It's very powerful. It's very, um, you know, PC-like in that way. And that's actually something that's missing on some of the other competing boxes, you know, that offer Pandora support. So not a big thing, but I, I, I think that, and not the, the thing, I you know, that I would say this is the one reason why you need to get this device. It's not that. I think it's just a a combination of all the capabilities. Um, you know, none of them, uh, none of these devices are perfect in the sense that some offer these services and some offer these services and, you know, they don't always intersect. And, and depending on your needs, obviously, uh, if you're big into the Apple stuff, I think an Apple TV is kind of a no-brainer. But I think for a lot of people in the Windows world, you know, it's just a lot of people. You know what uh, I think country. is going to happen is, is that uh, each of these devices has different features and different pros and cons, yeah. and they'll yeah. merge eventually. I mean, as people kind of get to know what people want, don't you think at some point, and, and in my opinion, yeah. this is good for Xbox 360 because it has the, it has the most powerful processors, it has I, the biggest uh, hard so, drive. So I am literally in the midst of preparing an article called, you know, what Microsoft can do to fix the Xbox right. 360 in 2011. And one of the concerns I raise is that this thing still, I mean, and here we are five, I think it's five years later after it came out. This thing has a 3.2 gigahertz multi-core power PC right. processor. It's got, right. you know, crazy graphics and it's high uh, uh, quality easily sound. Easily upgraded. It is a machine that should blow away everything else. But one of the problems with the Xbox 360 is that, it does actually support apps. There are apps, you know, we don't think of it this way, but very clearly, things like the Zune Pass experience on uh, the Xbox 360 or uh, Netflix, 
are implemented as apps. They're things that you have to update separately, you have to load separately, they kind of take over the screen and, and take over the machine. And then when you, run, when you uh, are done with them, you exit them just like you would exit a game and you go back into the UI. You know, this is a system that could support and should support, you know, multitasking and some of these other advanced features. There's no reason why it couldn't. And it's so powerful and it's so underutilized. It's bizarre, that, frankly. Yeah, and I think that one of the things I'd like to see from Microsoft this coming year is them really bring all this stuff together. You know, we talked before about how Microsoft has a problem, for, you know, putting the pieces together. They have all the pieces, everything's there, but it's not all connected. You know, they haven't connected the dots. And I'd really like to see them do that with the Xbox 360. I think if they do, then the, then the recommendation I just made would be completely, mo you know, uh, uh, mooted by that. It, but they, they have a ways to go, unfortunately, before that will happen. So It is kind of a shame, and I, I keep looking at it. I know. With exactly got, that point of view. And it's so easy to yeah. upgrade, too. You know, I mean, they It's could, got a 250 gig hard drive, yeah. right? You could have all yeah. of your media on this thing. Yeah. And you could today. You could do that. But by the way, the interface for playing that media is so lousy. Right. Even still today, despite the fact that they have this beautiful UI for playing cloud-based music only or cloud-based video only. But if you want to play video over your home network from network shares, media server, whatever, or media that's stored on the machine that you manually copied over, good luck because it's this crazy-looking, old-fashioned interface. It's terrible. It's too bad. You're going to make me cry again. <laughs> I am a critic. I'm a little teary. You know, Festivus always makes me. I know you really. You're, you're kind of the emotions mess. come up. Sure. Uh, <laughs> just, it just puked in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so Microsoft. I don't know who who is in charge of this. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft nobody's. has announced that, and we're going to be. You're not going to CES. I think you no. might be having second thoughts now because Microsoft right. has announced. Big deal. Well, okay. Windows 7 tablets. Here they come. No, that's not the big deal. Oh, what's the big... Oh, and they're going to make an ARM version of Windows. Right. In that's other words, bizarre. What's that all about? It, so, yeah, this is interesting timing for me because I... In the, in, in the same vein as, you know, how Microsoft can fix the Xbox 360, I've published two articles in a series yeah. about how Microsoft can fix Windows. And one of the things I've suggested for this coming year is, you know, further componentization of the operating system. So su such that you can offer a, a low-end kind of foundational system on these iPad and Chrome OS type devices, right. i.e. non-traditional PC devices, right. that has just the basics. None of the backwards compatibility crap that really, you know, holds Windows back, but just the basics. We'll have a new UI that is designed for multi-touch first, but, you know, also supports at least compatibility with standard Windows, modern Windows apps and so forth. And that's, it seems like that's actually where they're heading with this. You know, ARM is the maker of uh, mobile chipsets uh, that run on highly portable devices that get great battery life. It would be considered competition to, you know, Intel's Atom stuff and whatever AMD has going on the low end. But uh, there have been rumors about this for a while, and it looks like they're going to announce something at CES. Now, this could be the big announcement at CES, if you ask me. It is. It's absolutely the big announcement. Yeah. So. The weird thing is I got a call. Um, I had heard about this independently, but then I got a call from their PR department, SE, because um, I had signed up for CES and they wanted me to attend this event. And I told them that, you know, I'm not going to be going. I've got another, I've actually got a, a Microsoft project I'm working on that uh, is going to be that same week and I need to be home. And Sorry, we'll I be said, there. Well, just, to, just we'll go for you. Yeah, but I said, you know, I'm not, since I'm not going to go, Tell Maybe me. I could be briefed about it ahead of time. Right. And they said, uh, yeah, we're not doing that. <gasps> really? <laughs> Which is very unusual. You know, so I said, well, I don't understand. You know, it's like, no, this is, uh, it's a big deal. It's a live event. It's happening there. And that's, well, there's not going to be any pre-briefing. This is just, you know, Ooh, and they were trying exciting. to keep it, they were trying to keep it secret. So right. the problem is, you know, it's Microsoft, right? So this is not a company that's going to announce something on in January and release it in April. I mean, it's, uh, this thing could literally be, well, is almost certainly tied to Windows 8, which, as we know, we're looking at mid to late oh, 2012. Okay. So we're not so, saying Windows 7 is going to run. No, not not the ARM uh, version. So right. I think the way my my prediction for this is that Microsoft will announce a number of things, you know, at CS or discuss a number of things. There'll be some Windows Phone stuff and so forth. Obviously, they have to announce and discuss tablets like they did last year, but now finally they'll be coming out. 
that it will be based on Windows 7. And these things will have the Intel hardware underneath. They'll get great battery life and so forth. But it's going to have that same problem you and I have already discussed, which is that, you know, Windows 7 is a great operating system for what it is, but it, it's not the same kind of thing as an iPad, iOS type device. I mean, it's not super simple. It's not optimized for multi-touch or for that interface. So there, there are problems around that. Um, but they'll have something. So, and, and a lot of somethings, actually. I'm sorry, my son's home. I have to... No, you go ahead. I have to give him his... Enjoy uh, your children. I, I ruined his... <laughs> I ruined my Call of Duty disc. And I, had, I had to borrow his. How'd you ruin it? Oh, Leo. So you didn't get the, the, the circular scratch of death, did you? You didn't actually pick I up... I did. You I did. did. You picked up and threw your Xbox? No. Uh, you know what bugs me about this is I moved it maybe an inch. Yeah. And I did it delicately. Yeah. No, no. And as soon as my yeah. hand yep. moved off of the console, I went... You heard the sound. <laughs> you heard the sound. Yeah, you already knew exactly what was going to happen. So yep. I actually, I purchased... I think we talked about this. You know, I, uh, a lot of times when you scratch a disc, if you've installed it to the hard drive, right. it's okay. Right. But for some reason, right where I scratched it, when, when the game starts up, you oh. can hear it hitting the bed. That's the protection in a it, zone. And it, won't, it won't work. So... That's a really I, bad I purchased it at Best Buy, and, and I, I usually don't go in for these kind of consumer semi-scams, but they have a replacement policy. Right. You didn't. You can purchase. You I always buy it? it. Good man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to bring it back. The problem is it's two days before Christmas, so right. I'm not going to walk into a Best Buy now. That would be crazy. <laughs> You're but, not nuts. Yeah. Not for this. I mean, no. my God. So besides, so, you have seven or eight copies lying around, so it's no big deal. <laughs> no, we only have, well, we have one more copy, so I've been taking my son's copy of the game to play it but uh, you're a bad man <laughs> yeah. he needs to play too so yeah, yeah sure he anywho does. um so as far as, <laughs> as far as arm goes I, I i think that it's going to be tied to the release of windows 8 that this will be part of the windows 8 wave of releases for windows mm -hmm. the arm the arm version of windows so you know we'll see what happens i i i, I think it's going to be interesting i mean i i think part of the excitement of this is muted by the fact that they did this last year didn't they i mean they talked about Slates and they showed some slates. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. Anyone who has one of those slates, you'll forgive me if I'm skeptical about the slate thing. Yeah, yeah. And but, we've seen Windows Seven tablets. I got they, one. They're fine for what they are, and they're just they're as, not, it's just not, as it's exciting not, it's as they've been for the last ten years. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, every bit is exciting, Leo. <laughs> it's a no. It's it's a computer. It's fine. I mean, right. It, it's you have to understand. You know, with an iPad. Or, or, and and presumably with these other devices that are like iPads that are coming, you know, the Playbook and so forth, you know, they're designed primarily to be that thing where you're touching right. it and you're consuming data and all that. You're not creating stuff and so forth. Um, a, a computer is that situation reversed, you know. So a tablet computer, you know, that 1% of the time that it would be really handy to draw on it with a stylus or perhaps with your finger, you have that capability. But it's not a... It's not a touch device primarily. It just isn't, you know, and it, it never will be. Not without some serious reengineering of the operating system. And I think that that's the difference. And that's really what made the difference is a design from the ground up to be touch. I mean, I know 7 has plenty of touch features. It's, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's got to be designed from the ground up. And yeah, not I mean, even, even the OS, the software has to be designed from the ground up to be touched. Exactly, exactly. When when somebody writes an iPhone app or an iPad app, they're designing it, you know, with that interface in mind. It's part of the experience. You're not going to see stupid little menus with pull-down menus and, you know, little things you couldn't possibly tap with your own finger. It's designed, you know, all of the buttons and the things that you interact with have a, you know, that hit zone and they're right. the right sizes and so forth. You know, Windows... Uh, it's it's comical, really, when you think about it. You know, if you um, if you install Windows Seven on a hardware device, and it doesn't matter if it's a desktop computer or a, a tablet or a laptop or whatever, and it ha it has certain characteristics in the hardware, like uh, dip multi touch points on the screen, for example, would be one of them. It, will, it makes this really subtle change to the UI where it basically goes into big icon mode. You know, and, and one of the ways you can tell at a glance that it's happened is if you look down at that little arrow peak button in the corner you know instead of being a thin little rectangle it's like a slightly fatter rectangle right, it's like right. this is the this is the change they've made so right. now you can touch it you know and it's like really that's the <laughs> that's it that's it huh? that's all you get <laughs> it is it's literally all you get it's it's yeah. stupid so. well we're in a very i think we're just an exciting time and i think uh i, I do too yeah. i wonder how hard to make uh, windows uh, arm based it is is it, i mean is it written portably so that you could just recompile it 
Yeah, I mean, you know, people forget this, but the the basis for Windows today, of course, is NT. Right. NT was designed out of the gate to be multi-platform in That's the early right. days. It ran on other stuff. It ran didn't on it? MIPS. It ran on PowerPC. Yeah, I forgot about uh, that. It ran on. Um, I'm already forgetting the names of these things. The Compaq. Uh, wow, my mind is gone. The, the uh, PA the, risk is that what you're talking about? Or? No, bef no, no, no. The uh, I, not Itanium. The one. The the. <laughs> that's terrible. Was it the Intel? 64-bit Compaq or digital OS uh, or digital platform. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, not Vax. <laughs> no. After what, that, what do they say? They're saying in the chat room. Alpha. Thank you. Alpha. Jesus, God. Deck getting Alpha. Old. Get, getting old. Getting old. Uh, yeah, so it's running on a bunch of these well, things. Dan, obviously... your grave, the rut. <laughs> um, for several years <laughs> now. A, that was a very much a courtesy laugh, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, that was funny I, the first time, Leo. Yeah. Nobody's nobody's more aware of my limitations than I am. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not you know, complaining. I deserved what, it. <laughs> what Windows for many years uh, has been, you know, designed just to run on Intel hardware, essentially x86, x64. I mean, these things are very similar. So it, I think there's a bit more work that's going to go into this and maybe people understand, but you know, one of the other things that's occurred over the years is Microsoft has really worked to componentize the operating system. And this is somewhat messy because, you know, again, over the years, it's been, there's been a lot of custom code put in there that's not platform right. agnostic and all that stuff. There's a lot of assembly language junk in there that's, you know, optimized for the Intel hardware platform and so forth. But when you look at, you know, Windows Vista was the start of this stuff and then that server version that came with that. And then again in Windows 7 and uh, the server core work that Microsoft did to really kind of arrive at, on the server side, What what is that really foundational piece of Windows? If we can break it down to basically, you know, the smallest part that makes sense. Um, I think those, that's the start of this work. You know, the min-win stuff that we've talked about uh, long ago now, uh, you know, the kernel work that Microsoft's done. So um, part of this would be a, a much deeper componentization. And you can look to embedded products, you know, Microsoft's embedded products. If you look up, you know, Windows Embedded 7 standard, one of the things you see is, they talk about componentization. They, they talk about the ability of device makers to choose just the bits and pieces they want for whatever their device is. It could be anything from, you know, a router up to a something that looks like a PC and runs media center. Right. You know, why we don't see these yet, I don't know. But I think that part of this ARM-based initiative, is you're going to see new types of devices, not just portable devices like iPad, but set-top boxes, you know, that go in the living room that really are running kind of a version of Windows and thus are more powerful and do a lot of this media sharing stuff that we were talking about in a more seamless fashion, you know, that would fit right into your home network because to the network, it looks like a Windows box. You know, so I think it's it's important work. It's just too bad it's taking so long. Did you see Clayton Morris's um, scoop on the Palm? Uh, speaking this of Clayton, slates. This is the Fox News. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Clayton was on Twitter. He's it was a, a good friend of the It was an unusual network. place for that to come from. I think? know. Uh, Clayton has, I think, you know, he has some sources which surprised, yeah. not doesn't surprise me, but I mean, it's just, yeah. You don't normally think of Fox News as being breaking. No, no, breaking I, I can't think news. of a, a precedent for it's that It's because of Clayton. Clayton's okay. really connected, yeah. So I, I was intrigued by this Palm Pad news because when you look down the list of, if you were to compare and contrast, how did they change what you get in the iPad to the Palm Pad? It's almost like that article I wrote, the, you know, how Apple can fix the iPad. Right. It's, it's virtually everything I said. Right. You know, two cameras, HDMI out. Smaller screen, you know, it's like the whole thing is like thinner, lighter, you know, um, it's really funny. It's, 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 um, it, it seems like well, they have their head in the right place. I, I know it's, it's all not obvious. a surprise. Well, first of all, yes, it's completely yeah. speculative, yeah. but it's not a surprise either. I mean, uh, that's the point is that everybody builds upon what people have done before. And it's what I was saying earlier is that I think yeah. in this space as well, you're going to see a kind of a merging of features as people understand, uh, you know, look at smartphones now. I mean, right. the fact that this Windows Phone Seven is, a, is very similar to the Android uh, Nexus One it just shows you. I mean, we're we're converging to what is kind of the yeah. base functionality of these devices. Yeah, I I, I wrote an article about what I see as sort of the tre uh, tech trends for next year, and I I think of this class of computing because obviously, once iPad has competition, we we have to sort of expand the the definition or the term or whatever, and I think of it as smart mobile computing or smart computing, you know, where we have these um, devices that are essentially upsized smartphones, really, 
which I, I, I really think is a neat place to neat place to start for this kind of thing, mm -hmm. rather than taking a PC and chopping junk off of I, it. I agree, yeah. That's my, you know, my perspective. But um, So is HP going to do a Windows 7 a slate and a WebOS slate? or? Yeah, that's a good question. So they've said they are. I, I, I would think between this WebOS, uh, WebOS stuff that they've got and, you know, the recent news that they're, you know, getting rid of home server, um, I, it seems like they're really de-emphasizing what they're doing in the PC space from a, you know, from a non-traditional PC standpoint. So obviously HP is a company that's going to continue selling servers. They're going to continue selling PCs, mobile and desktop PCs and all that. But they're really, they're, they're pretty clearly putting a big push into this web OS thing. And I, it wouldn't surprise me to find out that their answer in the ta in this iPad space, as we'll call it now, it's just going to be web OS. I, I, I just don't think Windows 7 makes a lot of sense on a tablet. And I think HP has uh, come to the same conclusion. I think they know that, yeah. 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 And they don't want to, you know, irritate Redmond. Well, you know, there's a lot of changes of occurring they, here. I mean, they kind of it, have with the home Microsoft, server thing. Microsoft working with ARM is kind of a thumb in the, uh, in the eye of Intel, you know, they're one of their, yeah. probably their closest partner ever. Yeah. You know, HP deciding to go their own route on WebOS and having their own platform rather than relying on Microsoft platforms is also kind of a tough thing between two very close partners. But I think these companies all understand that the world is changing and that they're going to have relationships like they did before, but they're also going to have different relationships. Uh, and they're going to compete as well as cooperate in many ways. So I think the world's changing. And I think these companies all recognize they need to change with it as well. Yeah, so. and they're eating each other alive, <laughs> basically. Oh. Every man, <laughs> well, every man uh, for himself. Yes. <laughs> this will, but this will benefit us, right? Uh, oh, it's good for consumer. us. You know, this will lead to... Competition it, look, is great. It, even if you are a diehard Apple fan, um, and really, goddamn you for that, but but even if you are... <laughs> he will. He will. I'm going <laughs> to get see. to St. Peter. You'll he's see. Gonna say, you'll see. Let's see. He's going to have... You know, you know when the, the, the warning sign will be? He'll have yeah. a Dell Windows 7 tablet in his hand. And he'll and a stylus. Yeah, yeah. And then you'd be like, uh oh. <laughs> and I go, well, I'm in trouble now. Gosh. Yeah, exactly. I, I, um, I couldn't. I, it's like the I, it's a South Park movie where they're in hell and they ask you know, yeah. what, what was the right religion and the guy goes Mormon and it's like I knew <gasps> it. <gasps> ah. Um, so so close. You never know. You know. <laughs> so close. Um, I <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. So I I think that you as were saying this, something bad about. You said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple, no, I said, despite the fact, if even if you're an Apple guy, even if you're an Apple guy, and you're never going to change, you know, you don't, this is all fascinating. You're talking about Windows, but all I care about are Macs and iPads and all that. You know, the positive ramifications of this are faster innovation, lower prices, more features, all that stuff. So it's going to benefit everybody. I mean, it's just a, just like bringing the GUI to the Mac benefited the PC ultimately. I mean, it's going to benefit everyone. You know, this is going to cause more rapid improvements across the board uh, in all these product lines. You know, whoever you are rooting for, if it's Android or iPad or Windows or whatever it is, WebOS, um, you know, competition's great and it's just going to benefit everybody. Cue the little uh, dwarf singing, It's a Small World After All. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. We're going to take a break. It's a small world after all. My daughter said the second we got off of that ride at Disneyland. What? Can we go on that again? No! That was exactly my answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go on cannot. that once and you're singing it for the rest of the day. I Or slitting your wrists. <laughs> you know? I like the uh, amazingly fluid motion of those wooden <laughs> puppets. <laughs> well, they've been there since the 60s. I mean. <laughs> That's what I like. And I wish, frankly, that Disney would leave. You know, they, they killed the tiki room. and uh, There is nothing more fascinating, actually, than a 1960s view of what the future is going to be it. like. And how they haven't updated it in the slightest. The ride to Mars, Mission to Mars. The electric car that was yeah. donated by GM that, you know, yeah. killed electric cars mm. five years ago. <laughs> I, I mean, just, it's just, it's... It's unbelievable. It becomes it goes from being a, an amusement park to a museum, and I really wish they yeah. would not yeah, mess yeah, yeah, with yeah. it. Right. So yeah. we're Changes gonna do back. something we did a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you did it with Tom, our holiday gift ideas. I did. Uh hey, that's coming up. Also, I think we'll have time for a live QA with the chat room, our Windows phone app of the week, and an interview with the guy who wrote it. All coming up in just a little bit before we go there, though. Let me go here. Back up. You gotta back up if you want to get your data back. You know the cold weather's coming. Snow's coming. The pond's freezing up. 
Maybe your computer's freezing up too, huh? Did you ever think of that? Ha, ha, ha. If your hard drive dies, what are you going to do with all those, you know, those wonderful memories that are on there? Maybe your financial records, your email, all that stuff we put on our hard drives these days. If you're not backing them up, you're going to lose it. I don't want that to happen to you. And if you're backing up to a local hard drive, that's fine. Or DVDs or CDs and they're all there. That's fine. And you should do that. But please, you've got to have one more backup off-site. And, you know, I like Carbonite because it's, it's up in the cloud, which means I can get it anywhere. I can go to any computer and log into my Carbonite account, and there's my, all of my data. Or use their free iPhone app, their BlackBerry app. There's my data. So uh, it's kind of, uh, in my mind, this is, this is the way backup ought to be. It's completely automatic. You don't have to remember it. Anytime you're online, without interfering with your Internet access or the speed of your computer, it, it trickles your data back up to the net. It uses 128-bit SSL, so it's never at risk. You can even further encrypt using triple desk or Blowfish, so your data is absolutely private. And it's always available. Now, this service, very affordable. 15 cents a day, 55 bucks a year. And that's not for a gigabyte or two or a terabyte or two. It's for every bit of personal data on your internal hard drive. It could be several terabytes nowadays. $55 a year. I'm going to give you an even better deal. If you use the offer code Windows, you could try it free for two weeks, see how you like it. There are some limitations in the trial, but it'll give you an idea of how it works. Then if you decide to buy, use the offer code Windows, you'll get two months free. Mac or PC, Carbonite, it is it is absolutely fantastic. I uh, I just think it's it's a lifesaver, to be frank. Do it for the holidays. Carbonite.com. Use the offer code Windows. And we really thank uh, Carbonite for their support of Windows Weekly. And now, Mr. Paul Therat. Yes, sir. Pressing the buttons just to see what happens. <laughs> You're <laughs> just... not having a stroke. <laughs> I've just discovered some things I can do with the machine. And well, maybe you are having a stroke. Who can yeah. say? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe I am. Um, holiday gift ideas. I this is getting tough for me because you know a lot of my well, it's, a lot of my yeah. picks are like Android phones and stuff. So go ahead. Yeah, I'll let yeah. you start while I think of something that's germane. <laughs> Well, I, I'm thinking now it's two days before Christmas as we record this. It's probably going to be after Christmas, unfortunately, when a, lot, when a lot of people hear yep, this. So, yep, yep. Um, As we get down to the wire here, obviously, we can't uh, customize things online and, you know, send stuff people in the mail necessarily. So um, I was trying to think of some of the things you could do electronically oh, or good. locally easily, you know, kind of things. And one of the things I did do for a friend this uh, holiday season was I, I actually bought him a Netflix subscription. Yes. Uh, which you can do from the Netflix website. You can just, you basically pay for whatever amount of time, you know, three months, six months, a year, whatever. And they give you a code and a nice graphic that you can send to someone or print it out and put it in a card and it gets them the code, you know, the, the, the subscription. So they can go to Netflix and, and type it in and they get that amount of time. So I've got a friend who actually has one of those W, uh, no, excuse me, a Roku box. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't actually have Netflix for some reason, which is crazy to me. So I keep trying to tell him how great it is. And, and we've talked about it a lot. So um, I'll give him a six month subscription and you can check that out. But um, I, this may be gone by the time we go and look at it. But Amazon, I believe as of today, still is offering uh, some one day shipping options, even free in, in the United States uh, on some items. So that's worth checking out. We just got uh, five Vizio monitors delivered that we ordered yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. The holidays it's amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Um, that's Amazon you, Prime, boy. Yeah. If you yeah. know someone with a Kindle. Uh, you can buy them books for the Kindle electronically mm -hmm. and send them that. That's a, a neat thing to do. In fact, uh, a good friend of mine did that for me. That's a nice thing uh, to do. Yeah, I which like is very that. cool. And then, you know, beyond that, obviously, if you don't mind venturing out, I wouldn't do this personally today because it's uh, it's going to be a bloodbath in there. But if you head out to, a, you know, the local Best Buy, wherever you can buy iTunes cards, get Apple card, you know, Apple Store cards, the Apple Store, you know, Zoom Pass, Microsoft Points, uh, which work on both Xbox Live and on the Zoom. Um, Xbox Live subscription cards, I was able to give a few of those out this year as well. Um, and those come in different amounts, you know, a month, uh, three months, and then a year. And, uh, you know, Best Buy will have that stuff if you live in the United States. Uh, and again, don't mind uh, being a people person for a little while <laughs> because those places, that's going to be an, uh, an awfully horrific place to be today. But, you know, we're getting down to the wire. So um, obviously some of the bigger stuff is going to have to to wait until after the holidays at this point. Duncan just uh, in our chat room passed me along kind of an interesting... <laughs> excuse me. 
<laughs> so you're, really, you're all choked up. I know it's that cigar. <clears throat> I got to. I got to cut back. Um, Amazon's doing a weird thing. Tweet, mm -hmm. and you will get five dollars uh, credit at Amazon Video on Demand. Nice. <laughs> Wild. So you sign into your Amazon account and you connect your Twitter account. Then you follow I, um, Amazon Video on Twitter, and you right. and then you have to post this message. I just got a five dollar credit for instant movies and TV shows at Amazon Video. With a link. So here, here's a little uh, a tip that I, I don't actually quite understand how this works, but when you buy electronics from Amazon, you often get credit toward different right. types of things. So, for example, they'll have a, a video game promotion going on where you spend money on video games, and then you get money off your next video game purchases, and it's all automatic. It happens automatically. One of the things I've had happen to me, and I don't quite understand how or why, but you... You buy stuff, and then they give you these Amazon on-demand credits. And and those are actually really interesting. If you have a Roku box, for example, uh, let's say you missed one of your TV shows. You you usually DVR it. didn't work for some reason. You want to watch it. Um, and you should do this too, Leo, because you probably use a Roku box. Um, rent it or buy it on Amazon, not on iTunes. Right. Because chances are you'll actually get the money back. Right. And I've noticed this. I've already done this with several TV shows this past you know couple months where... I go and you buy it on, on Amazon. It looks like it's charging you. Yep. And the next day you get an email and says you had this credit, so it was basically free. And I think I've watched at this point seven or eight of these shows simply by virtue of using, I don't know if it's Amazon, you know, the, the shipping deal they have or by buying certain kinds of devices or whatever it is. They always have these crazy Yeah, no, no, I do the deals. same thing. And you always yeah, get like five bucks here, five bucks there. Yeah. And, it, and you never use it, but they, it's nice of them to automatically apply it. And I think that's a very nice feature. Right. It's not the type of thing you have to keep on top right. of, which is the way most of these things work, because they know when you have to do it, most people just won't do it. Well, and frankly, most merchants are happy not to give you the credit. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. Because most of the time they figure, hey, you didn't notice. Good. Yeah, screw Five me. bucks more for us. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the system is designed to work that way. So, nice. <sighs> I'm trying to think of what uh, kind of... I could think, you know, I just don't have that many Windows tips. Oh, Leo. To be honest, <laughs> I run out. So, but I, you know, there you go. Five bucks for Amazon. There you go. That's that's a tip. Thank you, Duncan. Yep. Uh, let it. Do you want to do some Q and A from uh, our family? We can. I mean, maybe we should. Do you want to have uh, Dimitri on before? Oh yeah, this, let's or? get Dimitri. Poor Dimitri's been waiting. That's not fair to Dimitri. Mm -hmm. Let me get him on. Dimitri Lialin is the guy who wrote. Un completely unsolicited, I might add. Thank you. In uh, fact, we sued to stop him, but... We tried to stop him. <laughs> no, yeah. we didn't. <laughs> completely unsolicited, he wrote this amazing app for Windows Phone 7. And there he is, Dimitri. First of all, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Uh, well, just like John Hodgman and I believe Barrett Tunde, I am from Brooklyn, New A York. Brooklyner. I love Brooklyner. it. That's yeah. awesome. And, and you do a podcast. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, kind of something I started about a year ago in my spare time. We do a podcast with Microsoft developers. It's called The Connected Show. Uh, me and my buddy Peter Lodati, who's also a Microsoft employee, we podcast all about Microsoft software development. So if you're a development geek, check us out. Are you? Do you work for Microsoft? Yeah. So, I didn't know uh, that. A little bit about me. So, yeah, I work for Microsoft for about three years now, actually. Um, I work in something called consulting services. So oh, we yeah. go out help our customers out there implement software. So I'm, I'm a geek, I'm a developer, and a big fan of Twit for a long time now. Well, we can only thank you profusely for the job you've done. Let me just show people. You, you put out a YouTube video, which we showed uh, a while ago, Yeah. Uh, that really was, in my experience, the, the first time I'd really seen Windows Phone 7 in operation. So it was kind of fun to see that and to see it be a Twit app. See, and what's nice about this is it really uses the Windows Phone 7 metaphor very beautifully, you know, with, oh, the, yeah. with the scrolling and everything. And the, you've got all the album art here. As I tap a show, it pops up. I can see an episode list. Uh, just really nicely done. How, how hard was this to do? I started it back in July, um, really kind of as an experiment first. I built a, a really early prototype that just did the UI part, kind of had the same paradigm of the front screen, and you can go to the show details, but it was all fake and mocked up. And I really said, wow, this could actually work pretty well. <laughs> uh, three months later, uh, I had an app on the marketplace. So it was actually pretty fast considering I was learning the platform. I mean, I'm a Silverlight developer, so I had that going for me. I knew Silverlight already. 
but three months just to you know optimize polish integrate with you guys i worked with ken a lot to to make sure this thing would work right ken shepherdson and, uh, our, uh, our vp engineering yeah yeah yes yeah, so it was great that you guys helped me out with some stuff and uh got this thing up and running so is silverlight that you develop in yeah it's so, well uh, Windows Phone 7 has two uh, ways you can build applications, right? There's X and A, which is for games. So that's really optimized right. for its building, you know, 3D experiences. And if you want to build applications, it's all about Silverlight. Okay. Paul, don't let me hog the uh, interview. You can, you can oh, ask I was questions doing something else. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I'm just loading up uh, some video here. I think maybe we're having a little trouble with our uh, our uh, server here. But it's nice. I mean, it, it, you can see it orients properly. It looks great on this uh, on the Samsung Focus because it's that great OLED uh, screen. Yeah, when AT and T yeah. behaves, the application looks great. That's the issue, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know if it's AT and T or uh, or us. It could very well be uh, be us. But it, you've just just done a great job here. Yeah, it, it works enough of the time that I think it's useful. It's like any other application that relies on the internet, relies on your wireless provider, whatever it is. There's right. so many hops in, in a way they could stop you, but overall, I think it works pretty well. It's an awesome app, and it. You know, it looks like a great Windows Phone app, which is cool, but it also has that, you know, twit style to it. Plus, it's a neat way to find out about some of the other shows, you know, and bypass that weird limitation on Windows Phone today where if you subscribe to a podcast, you actually can't download new episodes over the air using the built-in software. And this is a way... Uh, with our podcast, at least to get around that, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and I think the paradigm is going to change you know, drastically for, you know, networks such as Twit. I mean, think about it right now. When people subscribe to you guys, you get a subscription notification, right? You know approximately how many people are subscribed probably to various RSS feeds or iTunes or whatever. And then you have a certain amount of downloads. So a person downloads a show, you know, most of the time they're not going to re-download it. But then... You look at the Twit app, it's doing something very different. Anytime somebody wants to watch an episode or resume an episode, that's a download against you know, your APIs, uh, against your data source. So it's going to be interesting how people are going to track their matrix along you know, the different ways they can deliver their content. Because now you have your streaming content, now you have your sort of like quasi-on-demand content with the Twit app, and you have your downloaded traditional content with subscriptions like Zoom and iTunes. Uh, just something I think, Leo, you should start thinking about. It's it's going to be a brave new world out there. Do you uh, you don't do live in here yet? The next version, uh, which has been already submitted to certification, will okay. do live audio. So I uh, somebody in uh, the UK actually, a Microsoft employee named Stuart uh, Tutil. This guy wrote a special library for me that's going to let me do Shoutcast. And you guys use Shoutcast to do the live that's right. audio. That's right. So I've integrated that in. So hopefully that's going to be released, uh, hey, maybe even this week. We'll see what happens. It's a holiday week, so you can imagine. We also stream <laughs> uh, in H.264. Uh, is the Windows Phone 7 capable of playing that back, or is that a more difficult thing to accomplish? Everything I've tried, I, I can't get the video to play right now. And yeah. something I'm going to keep an eye on, I have a lot of internal conversations going. We, we have to do a better job in supporting some of these platforms out of the box. Well, we have that same problem on Android, too. It's only the iPhone right now that'll play that uh, format that we're uh, spitting yeah. out. So we have to, I don't know if that's us, we have to work on it, or somebody has to work on it. Yeah, you know, it's all about uh, different platforms, different codecs, right, different formats. And if you have something like live streaming, then Windows Phone 7 will work great. Unfortunately, and you guys, you know, hey, I'll pitch it. You guys should consider using live streaming, I think, because it, it does let you stream to iPhone and Windows Phone right. 7 out of product. That's kind of cool. But since you guys don't have that today, I'm kind of in trouble. I can't do the live it's, video. It's, you know, it's not us. It's, a, well, I mean, it is us. It's just that we don't stream anything. Uh, we, we rely on partners like uh, Ustream and Justin.tv to do the streaming. Uh, in fact, we only have H.264 because Ustream does H.264. Although sure. we have recently, as you know, switched over to doing it ourselves and are very nervous about that because we pay for the bandwidth. <laughs> I don't want a yeah. whole lot of people to be watching. That bandwidth bill is getting scary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it can get very scary. And so I guess we could do a, a live stream, a Windows uh, stream. Um, but uh, I think it's going to get there. I mean, th this is clearly the future of this stuff. You know, um, a podcast is not much like a radio show when you have to download it, but when it's something that people can listen to live and you've got content that's, not quite twenty four seven, but it's you know you're you're. We want up a lot people. We want people to have this live at all times. You bet. Yeah, then it becomes the next. That that really is a radio station, and right. that's pretty exciting. What uh, Dimitri, if I want this uh, application, what should I do? Should I uh, search for Twit in the uh, marketplace? 
Yeah, Twitter will do it. TWIT will bring up the app. Actually, Twitter comes up first for some reason. But Oh, why? Uh, I wonder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder why, yeah. If I search in music and video, maybe that'll narrow it down a little bit. Actually, I put you guys in entertainment. That was entertainment. Kind of, uh, okay. Yeah, I was thinking about which way to go, but uh, entertainment seemed more appropriate. So I'll search in entertainment. Uh, and then... Um, Actually, I don't know if the search is that granular. I think, as I remember, the search gives you everything yeah, in the it's marketplace. it's all over the place yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, that's, that's something that Paul and I have complained about, actually. <laughs> um, and how much is it? It's a free application. Dimitri! Come on. Now. Yeah. got to charge a little free. bit more there. <laughs> so, well, when I actually added it to the new version, you'll see a little donate link. Uh, I realize that it actually costs money to uh, to do some of this stuff. So if some people have already complained they didn't have a download link. So that prompted me, okay, fine, I'll put something up there. <laughs> so people are free to donate to the app. I mean, I Good. really see the Twitter app as, uh, as kind of my first uh, Windows Phone 7 experience, and I wanted to do this for you guys. So well, thank it's going to be a free app. That's really nice. What is your website? I, people can find me at uh, my last name. So L-Y-A-L-I-N.com has all my projects, the Twitter app, my Connected Show podcast. Everything is up there. Uh, people can just go ahead and, oh, I see you misspelled my name. I just noticed. So everybody puts an <laughs> I at the end there. <laughs> no, no I, huh? No I. It's a Y at the end. Yeah, my, my parents spelled it with a Y, even though most Americans put an I oh, at the end. Oh, not in Leolin. We got that right. It's in the Dominion. Yeah. You know, I probably, uh, that might be my fault. I think that's how I would spell it. Oh. This is how oh, I sorry, spell it. Sorry. And it's L Y A L I N dot com. Yeah. <laughs> yes, perfect. So, Dimitri <laughs> had some thoughts about uh, slates as well. I know you were in the chat room as we were talking about the slates. Go ahead. Here's your chance. Here's your, here's your bully pulpit. Okay. So, my bully pulpit's about slates, I, I think, is, is pretty straightforward. I mean, look. Slates have been done before. The, the concept of mobile computing has been done before. There, there's only really three things that stand in the way of any any company doing this kind of product. Number one, you need to have a good piece of hardware, right? <laughs> number two, you need to have a good battery life. And number three, you need to have a good user experience. And those three things, when they come together, will, will make Windows a great mobile product. Now, what that's going to be in the future, whether that's going to be Windows 8 or it's going to be Windows Phone 7 ported to a Slate device, I don't know what that's going to be. But I can tell you something is coming. And, and I'm surprised that people think that there, there's a point where Microsoft is going to be, oh, it's too late. You know, even if they do it like next year or two years from now, the, the people are realizing that mobile computing is very powerful. And that's that's something that's changing people's mentality. I think slates in the past failed a lot because people just didn't understand that this is something they needed. Uh, the battery life was horrible. The user experience is horrible. Now that everybody across the board, Android, you know, Microsoft, Google, Apple, whatever, everybody has the ca the capacitive screens. They have good battery life, and the, and they will evolve the user experiences to become more and more touch friendly. I think you will see everybody become a big player in there, including Microsoft. So I just get really upset when people say, oh, you know, Microsoft's not in the game, iPad's winning. Well, iPad's right now a great product. They're first. You got to give them a lot of credit for it. They change people's mindsets. Consumers want a touch computer now. And I think that mindset switch is what's going to benefit everybody in the long run. Can I ask so you how many uh, units you've sold? Oh, yikes. Uh, 1.5 <laughs> um, million, Leo. It's it's too early to talk about the numbers, Leo. I'm sure it's uh, a very low number. I mean, it, <laughs> it doesn't reflect it, it doesn't reflect on the sales or the uh, the penetration of Windows Phone 7. I mean, look, we've got a number. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I think it's worth it's probably worth pointing out that that experience pointed the way to Apple in many ways, right? In other words, you know, Microsoft was at least able to prove that, you know, this kind of computing experience is actually pretty powerful, but it doesn't work when you put a traditional OS on it, you know, that, and, and maybe that was part of the evidence that Apple needed to go in a different direction too. I mean, I, you know, uh, all the credit in the world to Apple for doing it. I'm just, you know, there was a lot of work that was done, you know, 10 years ago on the tablet PC stuff. And Microsoft, of course, improved it over the years as well. But, you know, like, you know, like we discussed, I mean, unfortunately, a decade later, it's pretty clear that, you know, starting from that complicated OS and pushing it down market was maybe wasn't the best approach, but, um, it, it'll be interesting to see what, what Microsoft comes up with, no doubt about it. Yeah, well, two, two comments I want to make on that. Number one, um, I had a customer, of course, I can't talk about my customer in detail, but I'll give you guys just a general sense just, of what happened. Just tell, us, just, just tell us what company it is. <laughs> yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> so, so I had the, you know, Acme Corporation in, and uh, I had, happened to have had a Slate PC. One of the first Slates is coming out uh, from the XO, I believe the Canadian company. Um, yeah, so I, had I saw that uh, a few weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, so I had one of those, and 
I had actually built a custom UI to demonstrate to the customer what they could do for their company. And I had built it, you know, around the concepts of touch, big buttons, you know, pretty interface. I did my best to kind of, you know, make a nice experience for them. And of course, behind the scenes, it was Windows 7. So I showed it to the customer and they were ecstatic. I mean, they forgot that Windows was behind the scenes. They forgot that maybe this thing isn't as light as an iPad or whatever, but they had their application, their data up in front of them. It was very easy to touch and it was all built in Silverlight. And this thing was running on a Windows Slate PC, which, you know, the big advantage of it is they can put it on their network, they can secure the heck out of it using everything they're already used to because it's just another computer, just happens to have a touch interface. It's just a Windows 7 computer behind the scenes. They have their VPN, they have their encryption. So, you know, I, I just, again, when I hear people bash on slates, I think once the hardware catches up, probably next year on the Windows side, even if the operating system doesn't catch up, people like me are gonna go out there and build great experiences for people. And that's gonna drive demand in the enterprise. Now, consumer space, that's, Listen, I'm not going to go defending that space. We gotta, we gotta do better, and we'll see what happens there. But they think the enterprise is going to really evolve and, and benefit from this thing. Yeah, my two cents. But uh, Leo, <laughs> back to the numbers, the numbers question. So yes. yeah, I'll, I'll, I can share statistics. I've shared it up on my blog already. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I probably shouldn't even ask because it's only going to reflect poorly on me. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Leo, you need to do a better job advertising this application. It's all your fault. So uh, as of today. <laughs> Uh, 3,685 well, people have downloaded the Twitter app, good. and uh, overall, we are number 252 in the marketplace. We are number 33 in entertainment as of wow, today. Wow, that's pretty good. We have 160 reviews have been made of the wow. application, it's holding at 4.5 out of 5 stars. So it's like 9.6 on the 10 scale. It's that's good. wonderful, Dimitri. That, and see, that reflects on you. Uh, that's really great. The great yeah, ratings. The, the app is great. The content is crazy bad. This app is, this no, app actually, is really 3, nice. Actually, 3,000 plus is, is surprising to me. It's actually very, very good. Um, yeah. You know, remember, this is a kind of a niche sh product, and we haven't really promoted it. Maybe now that we've done the show, I bet you that, that number goes up. I hope so. <laughs> By I at least one or two. <laughs> yeah, I hope five more people download the application. <laughs> well, Dimitri, we can't thank you enough. I, I really appreciate what you've done. And uh, as a kind of a little thank you gift, I've got a little um, schnapps and hot chocolate here. We're just going to mail that out. That's awesome. Wow. You guys have made my day. <laughs> And you send that to Dvorak, but put it into a case out of that Apple PC that he wants. <laughs> Maybe if I could fit it into a MacBook Air somehow, this would uh, this would make him happy. Yeah, just exactly, put it yeah. in there and close the screen on it. <laughs> actually, Gary brought this by because uh, I had mentioned that I needed schnapps and hot chocolate, and he actually delivered. Dimitri, great to talk to you. Thank you very much Thanks for the you. beautiful Thank job you. you've done. L y a l i n dot com. Please, uh, if you use it, uh, donate a little bit to Dimitri to defray his costs. And uh, if you don't use it and you have a Windows Phone 7 device, download You're it. You're missing free. out. You're, You're missing, missing out. out. It's a great way to consume our content. Thank you, Dimitri. Yeah, thanks Thank you, guys. Much. Take care. Bye-bye. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, a nice story. I did not know he worked for Microsoft. I, you must have known that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, are you okay? I am okay. Can I get you anything? Little schnapps? <laughs> yeah, some uh, hot chocolate and some Hot schnapps. chocolate, anything, you know. You just usually go the Baileys and tea route around here, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. All right, now, let's see here. Dimitri was great. Um, yeah, no, I just, I wanted just to give him a chance to get on there and, and talk about his app, because it's, it's, it's just so awesome that he did that. I mean, I agree. Yeah, it's a really, it's just a really, really nice app. I mean, it's not, you know, it'd be nice if anyone made, you know, something like that, but it's, 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 it's beautiful. like awesome, well too. You know? Yes, yeah. yeah. It's really well done. Yeah. Let us uh, take a break and come back. Uh, we have a time for an audible pick of the week. Hard to believe. It's been a oh. while. Uh, and then we will have our software pick of the week and our tip of the week. Yep. Uh, thanks to uh, Derek K. Miller. But first, who is a good friend of the show, and we'll explain what's going on there. But yep. first, I'd like to mention audible.com, also a good friend of not just this show, but of all of the Twit shows audible's been uh, with us for i don't know how many years uh three or four years a long time if you go to audible.com start browsing around you'll see why we love audible so much Seventy-five thousand titles in every possible category thrillers mystery fiction non-fiction holiday 
stuff as well. Uh, and, by the way, for uh, the holidays, 40% off. This would be a good... Uh, you can gift this, too, by the way. There you go. If somebody has an iPod, a Zune, and uh, any... any of uh, does not work, unfortunately, on the Windows Phone 7 yet. I understand that's coming fast. Yeah, what isn't? <laughs> Uh, not, if you have I'm a Kindle, better. it plays on the Kindle. It plays on many GPS devices. This would be a great gift to give somebody. Uh, look at this. For $16.80, A Tale of Two Cities and Great Expectations. 29 hours of Charles Dickens. That's good for the holidays. Um, hmm. Here's what you do. If you go to audible.com slash windows, you'll sign up for the gold account. That'll give you a book a month. Your first one's free. You can cancel it any time, and the book's yours to keep forever. Oh, this is cool. David Hyde Pierce from Frasier mm -hmm. does Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> yeah, because, well, you know, there's that Jack Black uh, movie yes. coming out, so it's kind of kind of timely. Here's David Hyde Pierce. I love his voice. It's so snooty. <laughs> Glub yeah, he's, got, he's got so much As nearly as I can Jack interpret Black. the word, signifies the island of sorcerers or magicians. It is about one-third as large as the Isle of Wight. <laughs> I love it. David Hyde well, Pierce reading. I don't think he's British, is he? Who, contrary to popular belief, is not Stewie on Family Guy. <laughs> I'm not so <laughs> sure about that. Now, you've got a great Audible pick because you like reading the uh, the thrillers. Yeah, I mean, I, this one's actually a few weeks old now. But, um, yeah, the latest, uh, you know, uh, Alec Cross book has come out by James Patterson. And, you know, it's pulpy and a quick read and all that stuff, but I've always really liked these books for whatever reason. And this is kind of a notable one. If you, if you've been following along from the beginning, because it brings back Alex Cross's, you know, most dangerous adversary and um, kind of the long awaited sequel, you know, kind of his Hannibal Lecter or whatever. So um, now, yeah, is it spy? Is it, it, tell me a little bit about the genre. It's a thriller. So it's, it's sort of a, a serial killer uh, thriller type, you know, police mystery kind of thing. And, got it. and actually this one, you know, for James <laughs> for James Patterson in particular, is actually a pretty complex story because there's three different cases going on at the same time that aren't, uh, they eventually interrelate, but they're not necessarily really related. And, you know, so it's kind of like three different stories in one and it eventually all does tie together. But it's, um, I like this kind of stuff. I mean, it, obviously some of these books were made into movies that were pretty popular and... Right. Why the rest of them haven't is unclear to me, but um, they should be. I mean, this, these would make great movies as well. Detective Alex Cross and Bree's wedding plans are put on hold when Alex is called to the scene of the perfectly executed assassination of two of Washington, D.C.'s most corrupt. Is that how he talks? No. Mm, no. <laughs> he talks more like Stewie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is it. This is, <laughs> this is yours. Absolutely free. Well, but any one of these books is yours absolutely for you. That's the hard part. You got to pick one. Just go to audible.com slash windows. Pick your book. Join up. Sign up today. I've been an Audible member now. I will be celebrating my, I want to say, 11th year in January. Yeah, well, since two, January 2001 is when I signed up. 11th year as a, as a very happy Audible customer. I want you to join up too. Audible.com slash windows. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly and all of Twit. All Windows year Weekly. What? Win Windows, Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly. <laughs> weekly. <laughs> Would you say that again? Weekly. <laughs> weekly. Are you saying weekly? Weekly. Weekly. <laughs> no, week weekly. Weekly. Yeah. Weekly. Windows uh, Weekly. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're cracking ourselves yeah. up. But we have to apologize. Uh, Polly, baby. Software pick of the week. Yes. So obviously the Windows Phone app of the week is the is well. The there's no and question about that. That's awesome. The, yes. <laughs> yeah. And the Windows side, uh, we have Microsoft Security Essentials Two, which is the latest version of Microsoft's uh, free security solution. Is that Windows out of beta user. now? It is out of beta. It came out of beta very quietly, and that was kind of surprising and all that. But um, yeah, it's great. I mean, I've always loved this thing. It's it's um, it's quiet and and fast, and you don't notice it's there, and that's exactly what I want. And um, it's always done a great job for me. So the the new version, I've been running it, you know, since I've been I ran it in beta, and now I'm running the the final version. It's fantastic. So um, that's something to check out, definitely. Microsoft Security Essentials to and it's free. Which it's is absolutely free. free. It's free. And now let's talk about uh, our good friend Derek K. Miller. 
Yeah. Uh, Derek did the theme song, right, for the podcast. I think he, for, he did. for a lot of your podcasts. He did. He's a great musician. His site is Pen Machine, P-E-N-M-A-C-H-I-N-E uh, yeah. dot com. And so, he, he's been ill. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I apparently he said he has cancer and uh, has spent a lot of the last year or so, I think, battling this with chemotherapy and different things. And unfortunately, um, he's given up on that. And I think basically is is probably going to die in the next you know, year or so and he's you know such he's 40 a, such a sweet guy he's very young yeah 41 years old and he's a mm. great guy and i you know it's it's dumb and and this is kind of a dumb thing to remember but you know after we got so excited over that jim alcha music i remember i was saying you know really just in passing but i was like oh we should use this as the theme song and um you know he made a funny youtube video where he he begged uh, us. He you know, <laughs> said, yeah, don't replace me. I can do Van Halen too. And, you know, he made, <laughs> it was very funny. A, I know. And I felt, so, I felt so bad. You know, it never even occurred to me uh, to think of the person, you know, who was behind this. And, and of course, he's a great guy. Oh, don't feel bad. I know, Derek, we've had him on the, the TV show up in Canada because we did, uh, you know, we worked out of Vancouver for a long time. And uh, he is, he's, took, he's a great spirit and a funny guy. And I know that he didn't take it personally. And we still use his music. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's good stuff. So he, you know, he has an album that you could, uh, this is one of the many things you could probably do to uh, sort of support him. And he had released an album, I think about five years ago, uh, of instrumental uh, rock type music. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon MP3, the iTunes Story, music, et cetera. So, or um, go to penmachine.com and click the right, through, buy right my the album link. It's right there. Yep. Obligatory, nice photo of me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Derek has been ill as long as I've known him, and he's always taken it uh, in stride and just uh, yeah. had a great spirit. And I'm very sad to hear that it, it's taken a turn for the worse. But uh, this would be a great way to uh, to show your love and support for a very talented musician who happens to be a great guy. And if you ever saw Derek on our call for help, actually it was uh, the lab in uh, Vancouver, just mm -hmm. just a great uh, uh, interview, lots of fun. Go to buy B U I dot pen machine uh, dot com and if you want to read his blog post uh, about his illness and about mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's going on for him uh, pen machine dot com right on the front page there helping me prepare to die is it's it's a very moving post that he put up yesterday um, yep. and uh, just a wonderful guy uh, we love you Eric uh, Derek if I knew his name I would love him we love you Derek <laughs> and we wish you the best and and uh, keep keep hanging in there. So, um, boy, it's just uh, what a—he's such a great guy. It's very sad. Yeah. News. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do I guess that's it? <laughs> Let's end on a sad note. But uh, you know, this is this is life, and uh, I do hope right. you have a great holiday. And maybe yeah, maybe up? we can appreciate a little bit better. Yes. Uh, those of us who have good health and family around us, uh, how fortunate we are this holiday season. Next week, a best of. Hard to believe. So how, does, how does how does that work? What, what's well, the... we looked and we looked, and uh, frankly, we, we couldn't there, find it anything. Turns out there wasn't much. No, it's going to be <laughs> it's a very short seconds. show. No, actually, we asked yeah. our listeners, you, to vote, and uh, mm -hmm. many of you did. And there are some great moments from the past year's Windows Weekly. We've compiled those into a, a festive little package for next week. So, is it a video, audio? What is the that, whole uh... thing? The kit and the caboodle. Everything. Wow. Yeah. So this may be an episode I actually want to watch for a chance. Yeah, yeah you might want to see how humiliated <laughs> you could be in one right. uh, in one hour-long episode. It'll come out as uh, as Windows Weekly does every Thursday uh, on our nice. feed next week. And then we'll be back. But I don't know exactly how this is going to work uh, because we're going to be in Vegas. Uh, the week of Vegas. Uh, CS, you mean? Yeah, I so think we'll have to record I think early. I, I think Eileen has already yeah. contacted me about that, but... I, I don't remember. I can't. And Google Calendar is loading very slow. But let me see if I can find it. Here she comes. Yeah, we're, we are. It's in the dock. It on, she says. What? It's, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday at four p.m. Pacific, seven p.m. Eastern at live.twit.tv is our next edition. That'll be January. Th is that third or fourth? Third. Fourth. Fourth. And, uh, noon Eastern. Noon Eastern. I'm confused. Nine a.m. We're doing that. <laughs> Let's just no, let's not worry about it right now. The point is, the week of CES. Where's that schnapps? The, the week after New Year's. <sighs> okay, whatever you say. 
be on a different 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern on January 4th, live.twit.tv. The next episode, next live real episode of Windows Weekly, but, but the best of is fun. So do catch that. And uh, uh, you're not going to Vegas. You, 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 Microsoft hasn't changed your mind, huh? Well, the, the weekend that follows that day we were just talking about, I'm doing a focus group on Saturday and Sunday ah. uh, here in Dedham. Ah. And uh, last week when um, Tom, who, by the way, was an excellent co-host, uh, when he was on, <sighs> <laughs> those days I, I look back and remember <laughs> fondly. Where's uh, the I, well, I asked, you know, if anyone is listening and they, and they live in the Boston area and they're interested in taking part, it'll take about an hour. And uh, I'll, I, I've gotten a bunch of emails from people already. I'm looking to get about 25 people in. And uh, Oh, so you need I, people still. I think so, and okay. I, I, I have a number of people in mind, but if you've already written in, I will, what I'm going to do is send out a mass email, uh, probably, uh, definitely after the holiday, after Christmas, and explain the logistics, and I'll ask people which day they prefer and so forth, and um, I'm still waiting to hear back. I'm trying to get the, uh, to book a room at the Dedham Hilton to have this event at, and um, we'll do it that weekend regardless. So, if you haven't written in, please do, and if you have, I will, I will get back to you. And even if Paul isn't there, we will be at, at CES in Vegas in mm -hmm. force. Your favorite person in the world, Tom Merritt, will be there with us along with mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. all of our uh, other staffers. And uh, we're sure. going to do big-time coverage. So if you want to know what's happening with Microsoft and ARM and Slates and so forth, we'll have that as well as all the other uh, news from CES starting uh, that Wednesday, January 5th. Paul, have a great holiday. and uh, Thank you, sir. You too. Thank you for a wonderful 2010. I look forward to working with you. Uh, to the degree that you'll allow me to in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'll be okay with that. All right. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas, everybody. Sometimes people tell me I look like Anne Hathaway. Hello, hey, sir. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good, how are you? Very, very good. Very jolly, very festive getting ready for another wonderful Christmas. Okay. How about you? <laughs> it's Festivus, you know. You know, I, I miss Tom a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? You did one lousy show with you, and all of a sudden you miss him. You know? Oh, I miss Tom. Oh, I wish Tom were back. He was so good.